Hi, and welcome to The Caption Life, a show for the most casual and dedicated fans of comics and a member of the Comic Watch family. I'm your host, Sean. Join me and discover what the world of comics and graphic novels have to offer. From one-on-one interviews with industry professionals, roundtable discussions with passionate fans, and reviews on the latest comics, TV shows, and movies. Now let's dive right on in. Hey everyone, and thank you for coming back to the show. Today we're going to be talking about a specific genre of films, and that is video games-based movies. And to talk about this topic and to have a discussion about some of the great movies and not-so-great movies that fits under this category, I invited back our former co-host, Kevin Stoliker. Kevin, thanks for coming back, man. How you doing? Hey, Hey, I'm doing great. It's great to be back, too. Yeah, well, you know what's interesting is... This is a topic that you and I have actually talked about wanting to do an episode on for um, ever since 2021, I believe. Yeah, so a- this is April of 2021. So this, <laughs> depending on when this episode airs. Yeah. Two it years might... in the making. Yeah. Two years, four years, whatnot. But yeah, at the time of this recording, it'll be at least two years. Um, and just to let people know, this is what's considered a backup episode. Um, so if you've uh, listened to one of the other episodes or backup episodes, um, you probably know a little bit about it or if you're just familiar with this. But basically, a backup episode is just having an episode on hand to release in case I can't put something out for that week. Maybe I'm on vacation or maybe I'm just not feeling well or life happens or maybe I just couldn't find someone to come on the show. And so I like to have some of these episodes um, kind of in the back burner as a way to be able to put something out for you all. And so Kevin has graciously come on the show to do this ahead of time. Time. So it might come out later this year. It might be five years before this comes out. And by then there might be a lot more video games based uh, movies. A lot of better ones. About. A lot of better ones to talk about. <laughs> I know. That's the thing is like, I think with some of the ones that we've had, we can't get any lower than that, but mm-hmm. uh, we'll see though. So, <laughs> um, but and because of that, usually our episodes includes um, an ending segment about the comics that we're reading. Um, we're not going to include that for this episode because we don't know when this is going to go out. And so this might be something that will go out next week. Uh, it might be, you know, two years from now. So we just don't know if the comics that we're reading is actually the comics that we're reading uh, when you're listening to this. So we're going to leave that part off for the episode, but we're going to get into talking about live action video game movies. So to right. s- and, and we're about to, when, when this is being recorded is like just before the, uh, the last of us series, Yes. So if that's the day awesome, before, yeah. yeah, like if that's <laughs> awesome, guys, uh, <laughs> we, yeah. we didn't have a chance to watch it yet because we're recording this in January. Exactly. Yeah. So what we're going to do first is I have a list of live action video games uh, movies. So this is going to be all live action that we're going to talk about. We're not going to talk about the animated ones because we know there's going to be some um, that are animated that we could probably tap into. But again, that's going to be a wide range. I feel like that's way too much to talk about. So we're going to focus more on live action video games. Um, And so I'm going to give everybody a list just to uh, have a refresher of what those video game uh, movies are. And I'll also make sure to link this list in the show notes as well, too. So I'm going to go through that and then we'll go through our uh, questions and discussion topics or discussion points that we're going to go through uh, today. So to remind us, what are some live action video game movies are out there? Um, I'm going to start off with the very first movie that was ever created based on a video game. And Kevin, I want to ask you, do you know what this movie is? Well, it's not it's not the wizard movie from like 1989 where the kids like playing Mario three, is it? <laughs> no, because it's not because that's not a movie that's based on a video yeah, game. That's a movie about a, movie a video, about game. video games. Yeah. yeah, no, but that's a great um, movie. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's one of one of my all time favorites. Yeah, um, I'm. It, it's it's not it's not the Mario Brothers movie, is it? It is the Mario Brothers Oof. movie. <laughs> Rough start. Rough start. So yeah, that's the very first one that came out in May twenty eighth, nineteen ninety three. Um, and then again, all these are going to be in chronological order. So after Super Mario Brothers, we had Double Dragon, uh, Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat. And this is 1995 Mortal Kombat. We know there's a 2021 one. Um, and then Mortal Kombat Annihilation, Wing Commander, uh, sorry, Wing Commander, Lara Croft Tomb Raider, which I remember when that one came out, uh, Resident Evil, Lara Croft Tomb Raider, The Cradle of Life. House of the Dead, Resident Evil, Apocalypse, Alone in the Dark, Doom, Blood Rain, Silent Hill, DOA, 
uh, Resident Evil Extinction, Postal Hitman, and the Name of a King, A Dungeon Siege Tale, Far Cry, Max Payne, Street Fighter, The Legend of Chun Li, Tekken, Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time, Resident Evil Afterlife, Resident Evil Retribution, Silent Hill Revelation, Need for Speed, Hitman Agent 47, Warcraft, Assassin's Creed, Resident Evil The Final Chapter, Tomb Raider, Rampage, uh, Dead Trigger, Pokemon Detective Pikachu, Sonic the Hedgehog, Monster Hunter, Mortal Kombat 2021, Werewolves Within, Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City, Uncharted, and Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Um, I gotta be honest, after reading that list, there's a lot more live action video games movies than I realized. What do you think, Kevin? I was actually recognizing some of those things. I've some I've seen some of those, did not realize that they were based on yes. um video games. Like I remember seeing Wing Commander with Freddie Prince Jr., and I didn't realize that was a, a video game movie. It's a terrible movie, but <laughs> yeah, it, it same here. And, um I didn't realize in the name of the king was a video game movie. That's the one with Jason Statham. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I only watched parts of it. It didn't do very well in the box office. I'm looking at the numbers and it's a uh, um it grossed at 13 million. Mm-hmm. And uh on Rotten Tomatoes, it got a score of four <laughs> percent. Yeah, it's um <laughs> Yul Bowl is the U Bowl is the um German film director that's responsible for some of these travesties. Oh um, my gosh, okay. Um, Alone in the dark, name uh name of the king, mm-hmm. postal. Um, is he just doesn't have a very good track record for making um good movies. The thing is, is he makes cheap movies and um mm. yeah, and so they can make money off of it still. Right. Okay, that makes right. sense. Yeah, Metacritic score was a 15 out of a hundred, and it was uh, distributed by 20th Century Fox, so it's not like it's a one-off right. um production company by any right. means. So yeah. But yeah, same thing. It's is I'm looking at some of these uh, films. I'm like, I didn't even know this was based on a video game for some of these. Uh, right. And there's just some I just haven't heard of before. I'm like, okay, that's <laughs> I guess that's a, a video game movie. So, but yeah, so that's just kind of keep that um, as a reminder for you all. If you listen to this and you're like, oh, I didn't realize that was a video game movie, or I hey, I forgot about that. That's why I like to read these ahead of time, so that way you can have this in your mind as we're talking mm-hmm. about this. So, mm-hmm. uh, before we jump into our first question, uh, we did ask this question to some of our listeners, and so I do want to recognize and thank uh, all those who did contribute. So um, that comes from Joe Loves Comics from Twitter, Thirty and Nerdy Pod from Twitter, the ODPH podcast from the Illumina the Illumnicasters Discord, which if you're interested in joining our Discord server, I will put a link in the show notes below. Uh, eBunny061 from Twitter and Paperweight Entertainment from TikTok. So thank you all for uh, sharing your thoughts about this topic and answering the questions. Uh, Kevin, let's go ahead and dive into our first question. And that is, why is it such a challenge for video games based movies to be so successful. Now, before you answer that question, let me go ahead and share what our listeners had said, and then we'll go ahead and chime in with our answer. So, okay. Uh, Joe Loves Comics said, primarily I've seen before, it can be hard to distill a long form narrative of a game into a movie that's short by comparison. I can definitely see that, especially if there's just so much lore to adapt from. It can be uh, maybe come off cheap um, or like a week of uh, a weaker or lesser imitation of the game narrative. Uh, 30 and nerdy pod said fans are picky and they are normally done as a money grab, not as a passion project, um, which will be interesting. I think we'll get to that a little bit later when we talk about, um, one of the movies that we don't enjoy, um, mm-hmm. from this list. Cause I think it'll be interesting to come back to that. Um, ODPH podcast said translating video game action to real life comes off, off, uh, un- inauthentic. Um, eBunny061 said the problem is that the strengths of video game narratives do not translate well into film. Immersion especially is hard due to the game being interactive versus watching on a screen. And Paperweight Entertainment said, game experience varies from player to player. That is nearly impossible to capture on film as an adaptation because each person has a different idea of how the story should be told. Also, film studios keep trying to reinvent the wheel instead of sticking to the simple story that is told in the game. So I think these are all really good points and very interesting points. And I actually agree with a lot of these. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so this it, is, um, you know, we could probably just do a whole episode of uh, what 
uh, these people <laughs> think, and we can be like, yeah, we agree. We can move on yeah. <laughs> almost. But um, but yeah, so Kevin, uh, after hearing that, what are some of your thoughts of um, why it's hard to be to make a successful video game uh, movie? Yeah. I think I think what it is is you know people that create these video games and in, in doing so um you create characters that people that people care about right um, that people are invested in so there's a there's a built-in market for it but also if you're going back to the well of a story you've already told in a, in a much more immersive experience through video games with mm -hmm. with a much longer timeline um to take advantage of then then you're you're cutting way down in a two, two and a half hour movie, what, what that is. And I mean, I, I don't have a lot of time for video games and I will, I will say that a, a lot of times when I'm interested in the story of a video game, I will go and watch um, the cut scenes that are on YouTube. And even some of the, some of the really good ones have six hours worth of storytelling, like mm -hmm. cut scenes in them. And so it's, it's hard to condense that uh, to, to condense it down. But the other thing is also hard to bring something new to the table. That's one of the reasons why um, comic book movies are often so hard to adapt because the people who are your biggest fans, the people who are most familiar with the story have mm -hmm. already seen that story and, and they're, they're looking for something new. Um, and then it's a double-edged sword. You deliver something new and the, they're the, the loudest voices. Well, that's not the hero that I know. <laughs> and so you're kind of damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Yeah. No, I, I agree with the comic book movies, um, especially. It's one of those things where if you try something new, it's going to get criticized. If you try mm -hmm. to do, you know, uh, strictly panel by panel of an exact issue or run, it's going to get criticized as well, too, because, I mean, I'll... I'll say and admit this fully that if it's a direct translation of a comic book story run, I just don't want to see it because mm -hmm. I've already read it. I want to see something different on the big screen. So I think it makes sense for them to take liberties when they're doing an adaptation. And I think that's what we need to think about, that this is an adaptation. It's not going to be a direct translation. Right. Um, but I find video game movies really interesting because it's not um, a unique kind of genre, right? If we think about movies that, takes its source from other kinds of forms you know we have movies that have been translated onto screen from books from comic books um you know the games uh board games i mean when we talk about battleship right like mm -hmm. that's that's an interesting thing um but you know it's not a unique experience of taking something that already exists um in a different medium and then translate it to the big screen but I think one of the things that makes it very difficult to be successful, in addition to what everybody has already said and what you had said, is that there's a couple of things that kind of goes into it. Is one, video games nowadays, especially the ones that we're looking and seeing at that's coming up and the ones that's been done in the past, already has a very cinematic narrative oh, yeah. to the game. So it's very hard to be successful with that because when you look at books, books doesn't have any sort of visual component to it. When you look at comic books, it does have visual components to it, but by and large, when we see the you know the big two of DC and Marvel making their own movies based on the comic books, they have so many stories to choose from that they can make their own, and it still kind of fits in that universe, and it doesn't really create a whole new thing. Whereas video games, because so much of it is already cinematic storytelling narrative, that I think it makes it hard to be successful to make it distinctive. Mm -hmm. from the video game but to be its own thing that people will resonate with and love that i think it's just a very hard genre to tap into um and let's be honest i think that at the end of the day uh studios are not really doing it for you know trying to tell a good story they're doing it for the money because they know they can cash in right. because people love those successful video games so they know that they'll love those movies because it's based off of that so right. Um, so I think it's just one of those things that it's just going to be an uphill battle for anybody because it has that element that's already downplaying. It's like it's like almost like redoing a movie in a sense. You know, how many remakes have we seen that have actually been, you know, more successful than the original one? And not a lot. You know, yeah. there have been some, but not a lot. And I think that's the same thing with video game movies is that it's almost like a movie in itself the way it is now. I, I mean, now it's very much like that. They have a whole, you know, group of people that's not just doing the coding and the modeling things like that, but they're having to write the story and have to come up with all these brand scenarios of how you interact and things like that. 
um, that it becomes its own storytelling experience that to do in the movie form, you know, you're pretty much just doing a remake of another movie now. Right. So, right. Yeah. So I think that's been the biggest hurdle for video game space movies. Um, let's talk about what are some of our f- favorite video game movies. So Joe loves comics said that his favorite is Sonic the Hedgehog two so far anyways, but both those movies, the most recent tomb Raider adaptation from 2018 and detective Pikachu were all fun. Um, I haven't seen the most recent Tomb Raider, but Sonic the Hedgehog and Detective Pikachu, I absolutely love. And I find it interesting because it's live action, but with a CGI character in it. Mm-hmm. Um, 30 Nerdy Pod said, I haven't really enjoyed them. I guess Sonic is one of the better game to movies, which I can understand. Um, mm-hmm. ODPH Podcast said Mortal Kombat. They didn't specify which one, though. So um, eBunny061 said Silent Hill. And Paperweight Entertainment said Warcraft. So those are all really good um, and really interesting choices. Kevin, what's your favorite video game movie? So my my favorites kind of stem from a single um, genre. And I like adventure films. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a big fan of like the old um, Indiana Jones movies and things that globe trotting adventures that are kind of along those along those lines mm-hmm. and so for for that reason uh i am a shameless uh ambassador of prince of persia sands of time oh, i know that okay. i know that it's got its its issues yeah. um <laughs> Uh, do you want to say what some of those issues are oh <laughs> uh, well you know the whitewashing of the character yeah that's um, probably the biggest one yeah <laughs> yeah or the characters because it's you know the persia and you have, everybody's white yeah um <laughs> it, or or extra white which is british yes um yeah and so that movie would be drastically different uh today uh mm. but man jake gyllenhaal is like really charismatic in it mm-hmm. um it's it's a different kind of role for him um the the lady that's in that what is oh my gosh it's, i'm gonna name blank on it oh, i know um, you're talking about yeah and she was a bond girl and she was in uh um i'm gonna have to look it up now hold on she was in the uh, uh hansel and gretel movie with yes. jeremy renner yeah um yeah. such greta uh no such oh, Gemma Gemma Arton. that's it yes yeah. yes he was fantastic yeah she's she's like she's just like she's got that that thing like where she when she's on screen you you can't stop like paying attention um Mm -hmm. but yeah it's got its problems but it is it is a big budget kind of like a sword and sandals adventure film that like is just like one of my preferred um genres of film and and Mm -hmm. i really really like that one for the same reason to a lesser extent um i like um the angelina jolie tomb raider movies um because of because of the you know the parallels between that and indiana jones and then um i'm i i have not seen the second sonic movie but i thought the first um sonic movie was fantastic and i know that there are a lot of people who like talk about how um like andy circus and uh josh brolin should get awards for like motion capture work right uh, for like you know for Gollum and for thanos thanos is an amazing character but Mm -hmm. i just want to go out there and say and maybe i've said it on this podcast before but Mm -hmm. james marston deserves some serious (laughs) street cred for acting in movies where there's nobody acting against him yes because the characters are make-believe if you go mm-hmm. back several years he was in a movie called hot where it's about the easter bunny but between that oh, and two yeah. sonic movies he's just really really good at, at acting with um with you know of uh, the digital characters and like he doesn't mm-hmm. have a lot to go on so i would actually love to see that 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 process but um Jim Carrey is great in that film. So over the top is Dr. Robotnik yes. and um, <laughs> the, the portrayal of the portrayal of Sonic um, and that storyline. It's, it's, it's really, really good. It's, it's very family friendly mm-hmm. uh, a lot for everybody. So yeah, Sonic would be definitely up there. I have another one, but I want to, I want to discuss it when we get to the least favorites. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's fine. Yeah. Um, I have to say, so Sonic the Hedgehog 2 was probably my favorite so far. Um, for all the reasons that you have said, it, it's it's a continuation of that one. I just like the second one a little bit better than the first one. Um, I don't know what it is, but I just found the second one to be 
just really well done overall. I think just like you said, Jim Carrey as Robotnik was fantastic. I remember I was a little bit skeptical because I thought maybe they were just bringing a big name celebrity just to bring in the attraction, but he actually did the character Mm -hmm. very well and did justice to the character that he made it its own. Um, Excuse me. Excuse me. Sorry. Let me uh, pause on that. Um, The other two that I want to mention, these are more for, I guess, nostalgic reasons and they're not great movies by any means, but they're more nostalgic because they came out when I was a kid and video games were, you know, just sweeping across the nation. That's why they started making movies because they know they can make money off of that. Um, But these two have been movies that have a special place in my heart in terms of video game movies. And that is super Mario brothers, which is a terrible movie for sure. But when you were a kid, you didn't care because it was just so exciting to see a video game that you play being done in in live person. So when I was a kid, I remember watching it multiple times and just absolutely loving it and love Bob Hoskins as Mario, love John Leguizamo as Luigi. I thought their chemistry was really fun and funny. And, and yes, it was different from the video game where Luigi had a mustache. It was more seen as like closer in age to Mario, but I thought Mm -hmm. that it was a lot of fun how they did it that way. And they did a lot of homage and, and tried to adapt it to a real world thing, because let's be honest, super Mario brothers just does not make sense as a story for a video game, like whatsoever. Right. It just doesn't. Mm -hmm. Um, So to make it live action, you had to take liberties on it. And I think they took some chances that made a lot of sense, but it just didn't really translate on screen. But again, because that was the first video game movie that came out and we were kids when Super Mario Brothers was a thing. I absolutely loved that movie as a kid. The other one is Street Fighter um, for a number of reasons. And I th- and the main reason why it's one of my favorite is that was Raul Julia's last performance before mm-hmm. he sadly passed away. And I absolutely love him as an actor. I think all the things that he's ever done, he's just fantastic. I don't think I've seen something that he was terrible in at all. Um, I can watch him as Gomez Adams. I can watch him as anything. And I think he just always does a spectacular performance. And in this one, even though it's a terrible movie, um, he did a great job as making an interpretation of M. Bison that made a lot of sense that you were just glued to him as a character. It it, it wasn't M. Bison Mm -hmm. that you saw from the video game, but it was very engaging and enticing and you just couldn't stop watching him in action. And I think it was just really, um, you know, just has a special place in my heart because of that. And it's at the height of Jean-Claude Van Damme. I think after that movie, he didn't, you know, make a lot of blockbusters after Fell that. off the face of the earth. He did. Yeah. But I mean, you know, Jean-Claude Van Damme was the martial artist movie um, uh, star that was out there. Premier, yeah. Yeah, you know, and then that was also the first time I ever saw um, Ming Ming Na Ming mm-hmm. uh, yeah Ming Na, and you know now she's a powerhouse actress in a lot of different films. Um, but it's just there's so much about their that careers in terms of, really their careers really went it kind of directions. went the opposite directions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely did. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, and then I forget who played uh, E Honda, but whoever played him, I thought he was a fantastic actor as well too. Mm-hmm. He did a really good job of translating that person um, on screen, and so yeah, I just um, it's just really funny because that is a terrible movie, but acting wise, with the exception of a few, like. I'll be honest, Jean-Claude Van Damme was not the best actor in that movie by any means, but the other actors that were in it were really good. So um, yeah. they're my favorite, just more for some nostalgic reasons. So. Yeah, and for the same reason, for the same reason, I'll go ahead and throw Mortal Kombat on that list. Yeah. Uh, because as a kid, it was, you know, it was karate and kung fu and fighting yeah. and stuff like that. So it was like the thing that we were, you know, I was 13 when Mortal Kombat came out. So yeah, <laughs> I, I was 12 when um when street fighter came out so like yeah it's definitely definitely up there yeah yeah no i know and and i remember mortal Kombat um as a kid is a milestone video game for a lot of us first of all that was the video game that created the uh rating system for video Mm -hmm. games because of all the graphic ways of killing somebody the blood spurts and stuff like that i remember when i would be done playing hockey that they had that video game um, in the rink. And so after I was playing my game or practice and we're waiting for my brothers to play, I would go and play that game. I was just hooked on that. And it was just such a, 
it was a lot of it was just a lot of fun because it was nothing you've seen before. Mm-hmm. So again, that was an example of like how they know they would be able to cash in on money because it has such a huge popular gathering that they know people will go watch it because there's something about seeing a video game that we absolutely love and want to see it happen in real life in some ways, you know. Now, video games nowadays are a little bit different because all the storytelling inside the video game is pretty realistic nowadays that you can kind of get that sense of it, but there's still something that we would love to see this with real actual people and just see it play out. And it's that whole fantasy um, enticement for us that we want to feel like this is a real part of real life on some level, you know? So yeah, it it didn't make my list, you know, for a couple of reasons, but um, you know, if I was going on, you know, the most nostalgic movies, that would definitely be one of them um, Mm -hmm. for a number of reasons. So yeah. Uh, okay, so let's talk about our least favorite video game movie. Um, and 30 and Nerdy podcast said Double Dragon. So did the ODPH podcast. Uh, eBunny061 said House of the Dead. And Paperweight Entertainment said Mortal Kombat Annihilation, the sequel. So um, did you ever watch Double Dragon? Yeah, I was when you, when you started to read off the list, I was like, oh, my God, I forgot that there was a Double <laughs> Dragon movie. And it's freaking <laughs> awful. <laughs> The, the thing I can remember about it is Alyssa Milano being like blonde in that movie. <laughs> but other than that, just terrible. Yeah. Well, and you know, what's funny is, so if you're not familiar with Double Dragon, um, you know, the movie, I, I'm not going to go into the video game because the video game is a lot of fun. I think a lot of people know about that, at least, um, at least people our age. But the movie is set in a future, like not a far future, it's more of a near future dystopian society, which... You know, let's talk about the fact that it almost seems that every movie that's made about the future, it's always dystopian or that things have gotten worse. I, I feel like I'm not seeing a movie where they talk about the future. And it's like everything has been, you know, a thousand percent better than where we're at now. No, it's always dystopian, right? Always worse. Yeah. So uh, Double Dragon is the same way. But I remember the thing that I think got me worried as a kid was they had all these oxygen tank stations that were lined up around uh, around the streets that people had to stop like from time to time during the movie and take a hit of the oxygen tank. And I remember thinking like, is this actually going to happen in the future? Are we in danger of losing oxygen on Earth? Is that what's going on? Not realizing that, you know, this was set, I think, in California. So it was the whole thing about the ozone layer. That was mm-hmm. a huge issue at the time and, and, and smog and things like that. Um, but yeah, I just remember that was just a weird, weird movie in general. Um, Double Dragon as a video game movie did not have a lot of story to it because, again, in the early days of video games, there wasn't a story that you had to tell all the details. It was more like, here's the plot lines as the outline, and let's just get to it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure they had more details than that, but they didn't have to share the details in the video game. So I think in the early days, they could have a lot of liberties with the story, and that's what they did with this one, mm-hmm. was nothing in the video game was really set in the you know, near-future dystopian society, but that's what they did, and it was just a weird movie all, all weird. together. Yeah, yeah, it was. So, And again, had some you know pretty well-known actors, but um, that didn't and, do enough to save the movie. <laughs> and I'll, I'll segue into our least favorite, because one of my least favorite things about video game movies is the, is the disappointment associated with things like that. Like yeah. you grow up loving Double Dragon and like, yes, there's a Double Dragon movie coming out. And even like as a kid, I'm like, this is not very good. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so what was your least favorite then? So my least favorite like video game movies are anything horror related. Yes. Um, because uh, whether or not it's, you know, House of the Dead, uh, Resident Evil, I've seen some of them. I mean, I avoid those kinds of things because it's not my favorite genre of film. But mm-hmm. uh I think they have a hard time uh, capturing like the the essence of like or the experience of the game in mm-hmm. those movies. And usually they just portray like graphic gore and violence for gra- for, for, you know, for shock value. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I really dislike those kinds of films. I'm not a scary movie person, um, but those all those kinds of things. Uh, that's not that's not my thing um i will say there's a recent one that's on the list of movies it's actually one of my favorite recent movies um that i've seen and that is uh werewolves within which 
it's it's not exactly horror it's kind of like a mystery um it does involve werewolves but it's not like overly graphic um mm-hmm. but it it's uh it's about a group of people who get trapped in a uh, snowstorm and somebody within the group is a werewolf it's based off of a video game that is available on playstation 4 and you play it with like the vr or the oculus rift and it's kind of like among us okay okay right um but once again like the story it's the story they can take a lot of liberties with it because there's not like a whole lot of like background information Mm -hmm um like built in from this you know shared universe or whatever Mm -hmm. and so um it's very very funny like Mm -hmm. it's a lot of like really funny comedian type people uh sam richardson is the main character and he's quickly becoming one of my favorite like comedic actors Mm -hmm. um and it's got uh melania uh vintrub the the lily from the at&t commercials right yeah who is just like a squirrel girl yeah squirrel girl but she's (laughs) she's also like she her her personality is so um her is so bubbly and so positive and whatnot yeah um she does a really good job uh in in the in the movie and so uh yeah i really really like that one i actually just watched it here recently um and, and i thought i thought it was great and but you know it's from a lesser known video game property without like a long standing uh history of you know like fandom right i was about to say i've never heard of werewolves within as a video game i think i heard about the movie yeah um but i never heard it as a video game so that actually surprised me that it was based on a video game for mm-hmm. that reason so i think the, i think the same thing i think i went into it what to to watch it for the 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 premise and then found out it was a video game afterwards right yeah yeah <laughs> Um, but so that was one of your favorite ones though, right? Yeah. Well, I just, I put it, I put it in there in the conversation with the, my least favorites because right. I don't like the whole, I think the, all the horror ones are, are, are really, really overrated. Right. So this was the exception for yeah. that. So, um, so what is your least favorite then? I'm, I'm gonna, my least favorite, like if I'm going to just go on sheer, like disappointment, <laughs> <laughs> I think we, I think we both know where this is going, but oh, Mortal yeah. Kombat 2021 was yes was was way up there. <laughs> yeah, and and here's the thing, and I'll put this in the show notes as well too, is that you and I both did a review of Mortal Kombat when it came out, and this was yeah. happening when it was still um oh gosh when it was still during the pandemic. So I think it right. came out in the movies and streaming at the same yeah, time. Yeah, it came if out I on HBO. Correctly. I watched it on HBO. Yeah, and um. So when you and I both watched it and we did an episode on it, we both talked about um, because you and I are both uh, people that looked at films from a different perspective in the sense that we don't look at it just for the entertainment value of like if we Mm -hmm. liked or not. But we also look at, you know, the cinematography work and the audio work and and things from the production value because we're kind of in that world. We're movie nerds. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And when we watched it and did our episode review, we just did not like at all there's so much it was so bad we decided to do an episode to talk about how bad it was like we weren't planning on it we were like did you watch watch mortal kombat (laughs) yeah it was awful you want to go record our conversation about it and we talked about it 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 that's right i forgot yeah we weren't even planning on doing it but after we watched it we're like we we just need to talk about this not not to trash it necessarily but we just want to talk about i guess just like what you said how disappointed we were in it because we were really excited we were really excited about watching it and and we were just disappointed by it with all the things that we thought um were just went bad and i think it was just more we were surprised at um how much we were disappointed by it because in this day and age i don't think there should have been a reason for it to miss a lot of marks like it should have because of Mm -hmm. Uh, it wasn't even, you know, technology issues that we talk about with CGI and stuff like that, because we didn't even get into that part. It was more of the storytelling narrative part that we just did not enjoy because a lot of it just didn't make sense. Um, a lot of it for, you know, what people say and all that, um, the lines that they use from the video game was very forced. Like it wasn't natural at all, uh, at all. And it just didn't really make sense, you know, like, why it, it was a natural progression of why they would say those things. So it's just, there was a lot of issues that we had with it from the storytelling perspective. It didn't make sense why they had a coal some, for some reason 
be the leader of the group when mm-hmm. Raid and all these other people were training their whole lives and Cole just found out about this the day before or whenever it was. Um, and then there were some things that were just end up being plot devices like Sonya, uh, Sonya Blade, how she get, got into the tournament. Her story was really weird because I feel like they just kind of made her fit. It's like they, they had a roadmap. They're like, we know here's point A and and we're, she's going to get to point B. And it's like by the time they got to the end of the movie, she was still closer to point A that they're like, let's just, you know, drag and drop her to point B. And all of a sudden, it, you, you just thought it was it came out of nowhere. I forget what the exact detail was, but she came in and killed somebody off. And it just made no sense why she just showed up and did that um, for that reason. And again, I can't remember all the details, but I remember that was like the oddest thing about that. Um, with that being said, and I think you'll agree with me on this. I would have loved to see more of Scorpion Sub-Zero because the first 10 minutes of that film, yeah, I was so, absolutely engrossed in it. I thought it was going to be a great movie because of those first 10 minutes because that was a that was a great storytelling. The, the visuals were great. The whole story was great. The way they showed things was just absolutely fantastic. And then it just got worse after that. But if they have ever made a Sub-Zero Scorpion movie based on that story with the same actors, mm-hmm. I think they would make a lot more money from that because I think that was a very compelling story that they could have told and they just completely dropped the ball after um, the opening se- uh, sequence, you know? So this is, I saw that opening sequence on YouTube a few days before the movie premiered. Yes. And I wasn't sure whether or not I wanted to watch the movie until I saw that. Yeah. Right? And it was very promising and I watched it and I was like, oh, I'm definitely checking this out. Yes. And this is what I can, ex- this is how I'll, like I'll, I'll compare, this is what I'll compare it to. Mm-hmm. From that, it was like getting invited to prom, like the prettiest girl at the, in, at the, at the school. It's yeah. like, you're super <laughs> excited. Like I've, I've got something big to look forward to. The prettiest girl at school invited me to prom. And mm-hmm. then you, you spend all your time and energy getting uh, hyped up for it. You know, quote unquote, you, you buy your tux, you get your, your, um your, your flowers and everything. And you show up to the dance with the prettiest girl in school. And right out there in the middle of the dance floor, somebody pulls your pants down or she pulls, she pulls your pants down and exposes you to like everybody. Like, it's just, it was embarrassing. Yeah. And, and I felt like just, I felt like betrayed almost. And you hit the nail on the head because it started with a script. At some point, somebody should have looked at that piece of paper and said, are you sure? Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because on paper it probably sounded absurd and it looked even worse like filmed. So Yeah. 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 It, it, so you know what's fascinating about the whole conversation here with this movie is that I think we are in the minority and it's not a small minority by any means, but I think we're in the minority because when I started talking about this movie after it came out with other people, there were some people who absolutely loved this movie. And I will even go far to say that somebody was arguing with me on, I can't remember if it was TikTok when I made a, a video about this or somewhere else, but someone even went to as far to say, yeah, it wasn't supposed to be a great movie, you know, but it was a, a video game. And, and that's what I love to see is all the things from the video game showing up. I was like, well, if that's what you're in it for, then yeah, it's a great movie. But if you're in it for an actual story, it was a terrible movie. Mm-hmm. But if you just want to watch something where it's just going to take phrases and characters from a movie and just plop it in, I'm sorry, characters and phrases from a video game and plop it into a movie, um, then yeah, you're you know your bar is not really that high to mm-hmm. begin with because that's easy for anyone to do. But um, yeah, but I don't want to be I don't want to be a gatekeeper, but like like <laughs> a lot of times you find that like if you talk if you talk um if you talk in like some circles or the general public if people aren't invested into the like not necessarily the movie but the type of art form like you know like we are we're going to look at it a lot different and somebody's going to look at that and be like man that's great um and we're going to look at it like nah it's not that great um i think there i think people car people do that a lot like some people like look at a car and be like oh look at those sleek lines and everything and it's Mm -hmm. so cool and whatnot and then like car people know like what's under the hood yeah. Like it's not, it's not good. So <laughs> that is very much my dad. Yes. <laughs> I was growing up to learn to love Chevrolet and hate everything else. <laughs> mm. um, but it, it, you're absolutely right. We're not gatekeeping. And, and honestly, if it's a movie that you enjoy, we're not trying to take that away from you at all. If you enjoy it, like definitely by all means, enjoy it. And we're not judging you for it or anything like that. We don't judge people who enjoy that movie or any other movie for that fact. 
we're just we're just baffled by how this was a story that just didn't make sense for us and how mm-hmm. it's still like somewhat successful, you know? And so it just, right. we, we feel like there is a lot of storytelling narrative problems with it, that it's unclear to us how it even got to this point. But if it's a movie that you like, we're never going to try to take that away from you at all. And if you enjoy it, by all means, always enjoy what you love. And, you know, just because we don't like it doesn't mean that no one else will like it or that we think it's terrible and that you're a terrible person for uh, liking it. That's, you know, you and I, have different tastes in, in movies oh, yeah, and movies and comics sure. and stuff. And, and and we'll be on the you know different you know side of the coins and everything like that. But we still respect each other and say, if you like it, you know, go watch it. I'm not gonna watch it. I think it's a terrible movie, but if you like it and you think it's a great movie, by all means, that's what entertainment's for, is for you to watch it for whatever reason you want to, you know. Mm-hmm. I think what's what's interesting, what you brought up is you talked about werewolves within, and we're talking about Mortal Kombat 2021. And according, and this is to Wikipedia, so I don't know how accurate all these uh, numbers are, but if they are somewhat accurate, I think it's really interesting. Um, because again, a lot of the movies that we grew up with very early on, like Double Dragon and Super Mario Brothers and mm-hmm. Street Fighter, the um, critic scores were very low and rightfully so because it wasn't great, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, when you talk about Werewolves Within, that's actually one of the highest rated um, movies for the video game genre. So Werewolves Within on Rotten Tomatoes got an 86% score on Metacritic. It's a 66 out of 100, which seems like it's a little bit low. Um, But when you look at other movies like Mortal Kombat 2021, uh, Rotten Tomatoes has got 54%, which is, you know, half and half. Okay. The Metascore Critic is 40 out of 100. But when you get through the rest of the movies, with the exception of some of the ones that came out in recent years, like, Pokemon Detective Pikachu and Sonic the Hedgehog, those have actually had really good scores. Mm-hmm. But by and large, the video game movies um, have really low scores. So I think it goes into the whole conversation we had about why video games are just so hard to make a really successful movie out of them. But with that being said, Werewolves Within, even though it has a high rate of mm-hmm. um, rot- uh, Rotten Tomatoes and Metacritic, it only made nine hundred and thirty-seven thousand dollars. Yeah, and, even though it's really good and that, really successful. Yeah, some of those, some of those, some of that has to do with COVID. I think yeah. because it wasn't given a, a wide release. Um, I mean, had Mortal Kombat not come out um, when it did and be released same day on HBO Max, mm-hmm. um, would have would have made a ton more money too. Um, because I think the I think the fan base was there. Um, but you know, you know that how important the the opening weekend is for big movies like that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's super important for movies that um, end up like with negative word of mouth, right? Uh, and so, and like once once negative word of mouth spread, people are like, I'm definitely not going to go see that in the theater when I can watch it at home for free, right? Yeah. Well, and, and here's the thing: is Mortal Kombat that came out in 2021, it made. 83 million Mm dollars right and and werewolves within came out july 25th 2021 so it actually came out after mortal kombat did Mm -hmm. and it made less um than mortal kombat but in terms of the critic score and the rotten tomato score it was much higher yeah mortal kombat so it's it's really interesting to go through the numbers in terms of how much it grows and then what people thought about it according to Rotten Tomatoes, which is not you know a great scoring mm-hmm. because it's it's very flawed in that. But I think Metacritic is a little bit more um, solid. At least so- it's more solid than Rotten Tomatoes. I'll say that. Um, it's definitely interesting to see some of the ratings here. And then something like Uncharted, which is a very very popular video game, uh, it made over four hundred million dollars apparently. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, this was when people are going back into the world after COVID and all that. Mm-hmm. And so one of the things that people were doing were hitting up the movie theaters. Um, it made over four hundred million dollars, but Rotten Tomatoes only got a forty one percent and yeah. the critic only got forty five. It's it's not the best. I was hope like it's <laughs> it's in the film, it's in the genre that I love, right? I mean it's yeah. it's a great film. It's not anywhere as good as the 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 stories that are in the games I was hoping. And I mean, $400 million isn't much, isn't anything to shake a stick about. Right. Uh, it's shake, like, yeah, but you know, I don't think it did well enough that they're going to make another. 
Like, yeah. I, I'd be really surprised because it was so critically it was so critically panned. You run the risk of people not showing up because the first one wasn't um, the first one wasn't very good. Right. I I do like. I mean, I could have really seen um, Tom Holland in that role for um, for a long time. It could have been his other. It could have been the Indiana Jones. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, his Indiana Jones, like uh, Harrison Ford had Han and Indy. It could have been he could keep going back to that well for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I don't, I don't think that's gonna, uh, it's gonna pan out. It is yeah. interesting to see some of the ones that have made a lot of money, like Resident Evil. Um, yeah. The Resident Evil films kept g- making more and more money. That's got to be like the biggest and so many sequels yeah. franchise. Yeah. Um, the yeah. first one made the first one. I'm looking at the list now. The first one made over a hundred million dollars, right over a hundred mm-hmm. million dollars in mm-hmm. 2002. The next one came out in 2004, 130 million dollars. The next one came out in 2007, 148 million dollars. Mm-hmm. The next one came out. Uh, these two back to back, 2010 and 2012, 300 million and then 240 million. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the final chapter was over 300 million. So we're talking about a billion dollar video game franchise, right. um, that, that, you know, did a billion dollars with a business and in, in movies. Um, right. and that's probably because of the, a loyal fan base. Yeah. Um, yeah. well, and they had to make so many to like, to get a return on investment on it mm-hmm. as well too. You know, a prime example of this is Avatar where they made a lot of money, but they also had to yeah. um, get a certain threshold in order to make another one because they spent so much money making yeah. it. So it's it's like they had to hit that uh, milestone before they start making money on the film. And so I wonder how much of that was the same thing as an evil with all the uh, visual special effects that they had to put into um, creating the movie as well too. But I mean, you're right. That's one of the few video game movies that seems to have really enjoyed success in terms of multiple movies and in terms of um, how much they made and gross uh, over the worldwide box office and things like that. Um, But yeah, it's just, I feel like, you know, this is just a really potential um, interesting study to do of this genre and seeing, you know, what the numbers are saying and and what we can learn from doing this. So, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right. So, Next question. What is a video game you want to see turn into a movie? Uh, Joe Loves Comics said that he is as skeptical as everyone else about Chris Pratt's Mario. But despite that, Jack uh, Black's Bowser and everything else in the upcoming animated movie looks epic. So I'm excited to see that regardless. Um, 30 and Nerdy Pod said uh, Ocarina of Time, which I've not seen that before or heard that before that's a uh, the legend of zelda game that came out on n64 on oh of time. that okay see i i didn't have nintendo 64 and, and didn't play that so the only legend of zelda game i've ever played was the original one on a nintendo entertainment system so um i'll tell you if you if we if we reverse engineer they're like golden eye is a great movie that was adapted into an amazing video game. Like at least, yeah. at least there's a track record for that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think, um, yeah, I think movies turn into video games are usually more successful than the other way around. That's yeah. for sure. Uh, ODPH podcast said Ninja Gaiden, which I would love to see that as a movie. Mm-hmm. Ebony 061 said Luigi's Mansion as a, uh, R18 plus horror movie. <laughs> that is a fantastic idea. I feel like that would actually make some really good money if they did that. I mean, look at, uh, I don't want to get too far in the rabbit hole, but the whole, um, you know, the um, public domain with Winnie the Pooh and all that, mm-hmm. and then turning that into a horror movie, I think it's just a genius. I-, I would never see it, but I think it's a genius way of just, you know, taking something and running with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and Paperweight Entertainment did The Legend of Zelda. You know, I got to agree that Legend of Zelda, I would absolutely love to see on the big screen as well, too. Yeah, I think, I think, the, I think they'll get there at some point, but I, I would venture to guess that they're going to go the way of Mario with that. Yeah, well, Super Mario Brothers back in 93, it, it pretty much... Um, put a sour taste in Nintendo's mouth that they they took a huge risk of doing that. Like they were really mm-hmm. timid and reserved in doing that to begin with. Like it took them a long time to convince mm-hmm. them to do a live action. And after how bad it did in the movie theaters, that's why they've never done any sort of movie since then. So I think they're mm-hmm. realizing that this is a market they need to tap to at some point in order to 
continue to make uh, money and things like that. But I think you're right. They're going to, you know, stick with animated versions first before they start tapping into, um, you know, live action stuff. So, yeah. All right. So what about you? What's a video game that you want to see turn into a movie? Um, I I would love uh, Red Dead Redemption. Okay. Uh, I've not played a, that game. Yeah. Madden has played through both of them. And I've seen like, you know, I watch over his shoulder when I go into his room, whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's it seems like a very compelling storyline. I know it's got a a really, really loyal following, um, but I'm also like a big Western fan. um, So I would I would love to be able to to see that. Um, The other thing is, is like what what I want, what I really, really want is like an 80s style action movie adaptation of the Contra franchise. Okay. From from like, you know, the side scroller from the, the Nintendo, like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you had the special code that you could ABAC, you know, whatever it was. Yeah. Um, up, down, left, right. Um, I, I think I love... worked that into the movie, too. Right. Yeah. Like yeah, some, yeah someone's like, like behind like a computer. Somebody, like, <laughs> like we've got to we've got to stop the bomb. And then someone presses like up, down, left, yeah. right. Uh, we've got to see that in a movie yeah. like that. Like everyone would lose their mind if they see somebody do something like that in a movie of a video game. That would be what, have, what would have been great is if like um, Mortal Kombat would have come out with like the Blu-ray where like it had the screen that if you pressed a certain button, it, like it was like the like the the extra bloody version. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just like the video game. No, but I would oh, love man. to see like an 80s style like uh, Contra mm-hmm. uh, film. Um because things like, you know, they're like Commando and Predator and stuff like there were there were things that like hinted like at it. Like it was it was definitely they all came from like the same boiling pot um, right. in the in the 80s. But uh, I, I would love to see that now. Awesome. I, I can't remember. I remember hearing about Contra and I think I've seen, you know, the cover of it, but I don't think I've ever played it or if I have, mm-hmm. it's been such a long time. I can't remember. So um, for me. I would love to see Metal Gear Solid turn into a movie. And I would love to see Oscar Isaac in that role, which there's Mm -hmm. been a lot of rumor. And he's actually talked about playing that. But there has been no movement that I've seen on uh, the Internet or social media of making that into a reality just yet. It seems like it's just a lot of talk and there's just Mm -hmm. a lot of conversations. But it seems like nothing is being greenlit yet. So I don't know why that's happening. But I would love to see... Metal Gear Solid turned into a movie. And, and the reason being is that Metal, Metal Gear Solid is a nostalgic video game for me because it was one of the first video games that I played that kind of transcended the, you know, it bit, uh, I'm sorry, the 8 bit, um, you know, traditional video games and told a cinematic story with it. it. It just, I remember it was the video game that was so far different from anything else I played at that point. Are you it talking about the like the PlayStation One version? The PlayStation One version, not the one that yeah. came out on Nintendo. Yeah, um, no, like when I played the 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 what is it called the um the demo disc? Yes, <laughs> that that had like the first that they used level to send with everything, and your game. and your yeah. controller started to vibrate and everything yeah. when the helicopter. I yes. was like, this is insane. Yeah, yeah, no, it was it was a big it was a big experience. Like mm-hmm. it would be it would be cool to see that on the on the big screen. Yeah, well, and I think it'd be really successful too because it's the kind of story that a lot of people really enjoy, and I think you can update it because it's been you know over you know, almost over 20 years since that uh, version of the game that came out. No other games have been out since then, but I feel like that's one that the story has merged so many times that you can take those pieces of the story and make your own. Um, that will be successful in a big screen adaptation. And you can really, you know, cash in on some money on that. Um, and so I think that would be a win for production companies and distribution companies. I think that'd be a win for the fans. I think Oscar Isaac would be a fantastic person to play Solid Snake in that movie. And so I would love to see that in our lifetime, that become a thing. So I don't know what's going on with it lately, mm-hmm. but I'm hoping that will come out in the next you know, five years or so, just because I think it'll be a yeah, fantastic you know, movie. But sooner or later, he's going to be too old to do it. So yes. Yeah. That's the thing. Or at least so. if it's going to be a franchise, you've got to get yeah. in. Well, yeah. Well, which you can still have him a solid snake and then do something like, you know, him play an older version and then like a new clone or, or something mm-hmm. like that comes in. When we say clone, you know, in the, in the game, 
they had clones that they didn't look like each other. It was just more like the same DNA, but they made changes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it would be a new version of a solid snake, but it can be somebody looks very different too. So, yeah. Um, And last but not least of our questions, who is a great actor that have made a bad video game movie? 30 and nerdy pod said Carl Urban, which the only one I can say he's in doom. Doom. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. The only thing that was coming to mind is like maybe Judge Dredd, but I didn't think that was a video game to start mm-hmm. off with. But Doom, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, he's in Doom. Okay, that makes sense. Um, ODPH podcast said Raul Julia and Street Fighter, which mm-hmm. we have talked about. Um, and I agree with that, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. E Bunny 61 said the entire cast of Uncharted. <laughs> yeah, it's it's yeah. Uh, <laughs> like I would I would put I would put um I would put uh, Mark Wahlberg on that list yeah. uh, twice because of uh, Max Payne. So yes, that too. Yeah. <laughs> and then Paperweight Entertainment said Michael Fassbender, who um, was in Assassin's Creed. Yeah, I'd have to throw that on my list of least favorite ones, too, because I love Michael Fassbender. Like he's he's such a like dynamic actor. Yes. I think like his portrayal of Magneto in the X-Men films is like often overlooked when you talk about like real like like in-depth portrayal of 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 a, of a character mm-hmm. um and then that movie was just a stinker yeah and it was just not it did not live up to uh it did not live up to the hype yeah. um yeah and you know i think there's a i listen the dwayne the rock johnson has two 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 video game movies on the list he's yeah. got doom yep. um and he's got uh rampage rampage Mm -hmm. is is kind of a fun movie it's it's not the best movie it's pretty silly it's it's premise with the giant animals and whatnot oh yeah but yeah it's it's well paced and um it it builds enough interest in the characters that that you care about it right um that's a that's a really good example of like Dwayne 2018 Dwayne Johnson Mm -hmm. um like shepherding something that was probably not the best idea into some <laughs> into something that was at least like serviceable. Right. I mean, it made four hundred twenty eight million dollars at the box office. Right. Right. Had had Doom had he not been in and in Doom in two thousand and five. Mm-hmm. So like you know a a good like thirteen fourteen uh, years before this. If you took Doom in twenty twenty two with Dwayne Johnson it would be a far superior movie because right. I think he as a producer and as a big star knows how, knows how to like wait on a good script and um, work with, work with different um, like directors and whatnot that would have made a better product. He was still kind of like up and coming in, mm-hmm. in the the film game then. So, right. um, yeah, but he's, I mean, he's, he's, a, he's, a, I mean, I don't think that he's a great actor. He's Dwayne Johnson in every movie that he's in. But I think especially it been... League of Super Pets. <laughs> and so, I think it... that's one of those things I always said. We need voice actors and not celebrity oh, voices because yeah, sure. when you watch that, you're not listening to Crypto and Ace. You're, you're listening, listening to Dwayne and Kevin. You know, because it's or their very, voice. Or very, um, like ironically, Maui. Like <laughs> <laughs> Super Crypto sounds a lot like Maui from from Moana. Yeah, yeah, um, especially yeah, when so... he sings that song. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that would be um I agree with all of those with Raul Julia. Yeah. Um some of the people that were um some of the people that were featured in a lot of these movies. Now, I will say that, you know, uh Ryan Reynolds bless his heart. Um I would thought I would have thought that po- Detective Pikachu would have been like it sounded like a terrible idea. Yeah. Um but it's got a lot of heart and then, you know, Jim Carrey with um Sonic the Hedgehog. I really feel. I really feel. I know I said this about James Marsden, but I feel like Jim Carrey got overlooked for awards um, stuff yep. because of his because it, the, the the nature of the film. Yeah, uh, but he's so outrageous in it. It's great. Yeah. Well, and, and that's what's really interesting is a couple of things is that same thing here. Sonic and uh, Detective Pikachu were two movies. I was like, uh, you know, video game movie. It's probably not going to be that good, even with the actors in it. But when I watch it, I was like, oh, my God, this is actually a really good movie. You know, not the greatest movie, but it was a lot better than I was expecting. It's one that I would watch again, you know. 
Um, and just like we said with Jim Carrey, it was it's really it was really good to see him in that movie because you see that he still has that same charisma that it's not um, something that he's doing over and over again, but he's adapting it to the role that he's in Mm -hmm. and that he still has that spunk comedy that he was really known for in the nineties. You know, he could still bring that sort of humor. Yeah. Slapstick universal. Yeah. Yeah. Slapstick physical comedy, still one of the all time greats. Exactly. Yeah. So, and and I, I think for me, the, the great actor who's made a terrible video game movie, I, I have to say Raul Julia just for the sole purpose that I really hate that was his last movie he ever did before he passed away. I, I think that's that's definitely a tragedy because you hate to see somebody go out like that where the last film that they'll be, uh, be known for was a terrible video game movie because I think mm-hmm. that was something that he wasn't planning on for it to be his last movie by any means whatsoever. And for has as great of an actor as he as he is, I think he deserved a little bit more than for his last movie to be uh, Street Fighter. You know, and, and let's you know talking about you know terrible you know video game movies. I, I gotta say, as much as nostalgic that is, Street Fighter is just terrible because the whole point of Street Fighter as a video game is that you get these warriors as fighting in the street. The game or the movie just did not take place in the street <laughs> at all whatsoever. It's kind of like Mortal Kombat 2021. There was never a competition that happened or a combat. It, right. it was it was supposed to be some sort of competition. It never took place. So it was, it was like pre-Mortal Kombat, but they didn't call it pre-Mortal Kombat. Same thing with Street Fighter. You have a game that's about fighting in the streets. They didn't fight in the streets in any part of the movie whatsoever. So it, it's just sad that that was the last film that he did because he definitely deserved more than for that to, than to be remembered for that role in Street Fighter. So... Yeah. When you were when you were like you were that was pretty hot and like you were you were old man shakes fist at cloud there for a second. <laughs> it just it, it just baffles me like <laughs> they didn't fight in the streets. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, because when you play the video game, like the whole like it's in the title, it's in the scenario, like that's the whole premise is that you get these words that's fighting in the street. Whenever you played any character on any level, even in bison, it's there's people around. It's in the street. It's like out in the public, you know, and things like mm-hmm. that. It, it's public, and but the whole movie, it, there was no public fighting about it. It, it was about a, uh, I think you know, um, Guile was was uh, like for NATO or something like that, or NATO a, a, a UN soldier, yeah, yeah, something like that. And it was all you know, secret military. You know, they had to go in and and save these people, or whatever. So it's like a secret. It's almost like a spy thriller type of thing that I was trying mm-hmm. to do. So I'm just like, so why are we calling this Street Fighter? Like, I remember at the end of the movie, it's like, so why is this called Street Fighter other than that's the name of the video game that's based right. off of, you know? So it's just, right. if it was a movie on its own that had no connection to the video game, it would not make any sense whatsoever. <laughs> right. It would definitely not be called Street Fighter. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. Well, I think we can all agree that we love video game movies, even though they're terrible. <laughs> yeah. But the great thing is you got to put a positive spin on it. Yeah. There's a lot of room. There's a lot of, it's a deep well to, to draw from. Yes. And there's still a lot of room to grow. Because yes. Because eventually maybe we'll be sitting here talking about in a few years about some of these other adaptations. Maybe we'll get what we were hoping for. Yes. Well, and I think when they start first doing video games, they weren't thinking about, you know, um, merchandising or films or TV shows or anything like that. They're just thinking about creating a really good video game. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, with the way that companies work, they're always thinking bigger picture, longer term. And so when they're creating a video game, my guess is they're going to be start thinking more about merchandising and you know, potential films, a TV series, especially with Last of Us. If Last of Us, you know, ends up being a really uh, good series, which I've been hearing nothing but great things about it so far from the people who had uh, previews with it. My guess is they're going to start thinking a little bit more, integrating that model of when we create a video game, how can we ensure that it's going to be successful in different uh, formats as well, too? Right. So. Um- and, think, and we've been we've been seeing that in recent years of um, these video games, even though we say that it's very difficult for it to be successful. Some of the more recent video game movies have actually been very successful. Yeah. And I will I will say that, um, you know, looking at the streaming model, if there yes. if this catches on, it may be a better platform to tell some of these stories because you get a, a longer arc. Um, that being said, uh, I didn't see the the um, the Halo series. But I didn't hear a lot of like positive things about it. 
So I haven't like sought it out yet. Yeah. I, I love the video game Halo, but I never played the story. I just played mm-hmm. the, um, you know, multiplayer with my college buddies. Um, and I watched, I think halfway through the series, um, I thought it was a really interesting story. I, I didn't think it was a bad series, but I know for people who love the storytelling part of the video game, I I know that they said there's a lot of criticism that they have about it. Um, but I think it was a really interesting story. I think there was just something that really still fell flat about it. I don't know what it was. Um, I just stopped I, watching I heard it because it was I just didn't get stayed interested in it after I that. I heard so. it was like the the Mandalorian beat him to it. <laughs> like um, the, the, the mysterious character that never takes his helmet off. Like well, that... but he takes his helmet off after the first episode. And oh, does he? Yeah. No, like, maybe I don't think it. the helmet was the big thing, I, but maybe that's what it was is in the video game. He never took his helmet off. And I think that was the big criticism video mm-hmm. game. He never took his helmet off because I think that was a thing. And then in the TV series, he took it off a lot, you know? Yeah. So I don't think it was like a huge component of it. And maybe they did that specifically because they didn't want it to seem like it was too much like the Mandalorian, but well, then too, you gotta, you gotta, if you're hiring somebody to play a role, you've got to put their face out there. Why do you yeah. think, why do you think uh, Iron Man is always those close up shots of Robert Downey <laughs> Jr. in the helmet? Well, I, you know, what's funny is speaking of that, apparently there was um, a rumor when Tom Cruise was trying to do the Iron Man movie. Um, he wanted to do Superior Iron Man specifically because mm-hmm. in Superior Iron Man, his face was shown a lot more and he wanted his yeah. his face to be seen a lot more, which, I mean, speak about egotistical. But at the same time, Tom Cruise is a fantastic actor and mm-hmm. stunt person. Like I will. He's a kooky guy, but as a actor, producer and stunt person, like he is one of the best in that field. And And mm-hmm. I also commend him for trying to get um, stunt performance as a category in the Oscars. I don't know why they don't have that yet. I think that's stupid that they don't have it, but I commend them for doing that. Now, that being said, I'm sure because he wants to win more awards and that's totally, he wants to win one. He, yeah, exactly. That's totally makes sense. But again, his stunts are fantastic. He does all of his own and, and they're mm-hmm. very um, well, interesting. They're very well done and very interesting stunts that you don't see in other movies. Like it's not replications or anything like that. It's like, oh wow, like Mission Impossible when he was hanging off the side of mm-hmm. the airplane. Not only was that stunt cool, but the cinematography, the composition of it was really cool too. Mm-hmm. And so I, I really commend him. So yeah, he is a maybe they'll maybe guy. they'll <laughs> maybe they'll approve um like stunt as a category by the time that like he's getting older and like. <laughs> In the 151st Academy Awards, Tom Cruise wins best stunt for a uh, wheelchair man rolls down ramp <laughs> in in Mission Impossible 17. That, yeah, that was his whole yeah. <laughs> and so. then, you know, like you know that the, it was just a sympathy vote. Like there were there were stunts that were better, but yeah. like like he fought so hard for it. Yeah, but I mean, but honestly, I like I said, I commend him for it. Um, I think he definitely does a fantastic job in general, but. I, it doesn't surprise me that he wanted to do an Iron Man where his face is shown all mm-hmm. the time. Because <laughs> right. right. as great as the guy is, he, you know, I don't think he could get really in. Very few people can get into Hollywood and not be egotistical. Like there are people that, you know, are probably not egotistical, at least not like uh, blatantly egotistical. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Tom Cruise is that kind of person that is egotistical and and not, you know, rightfully so, because he does a great job. But. I mean, it kind of comes with the territory. Yeah, but if too, your you know? face, if your face and your performance is your brand, you have to protect your your brand. And yeah, yeah. I, I get it. I get yeah. it. Yeah, much respect to him. He hasn't. <laughs> and listen, he's been around for like forty years. He hasn't had very many misses. So, yeah. so not, not a whole lot. I mean, got a pretty good track record. Yes, he we does. should trust him to make a video game movie because then it would probably be pretty good. <laughs> We we will propose that and and uh, see if we can tag his uh, manager or somebody mm-hmm. so that way they can see it. So, well, that is live action video game movies. Banjo Kazooie starring <laughs> Tom Cruise. <laughs> Say what? Banjo Kazooie or or Crash Bandicoot? Something like crazy Crash Bandicoot. The- yeah, <laughs> <laughs> starring Tom Cruise. Those and that will have a lot of stunts too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so so that was live action video game movies hopefully you enjoyed listening to us talk about how great they are and how terrible they are at the same time kevin thanks for coming back on the show thank you before, for having me brother yeah before i let you go where can people find you online uh if you're looking for me online the easiest place to find me is uh on twitter at hero city kevin 
at least at the time of this recording, because maybe this goes out in a few years and you're like, I'm done with Twitter and, and you got off. Yeah. And so no, now everyone will think that you're a liar. So, <laughs> yeah. well, thanks, man. And again, you're welcome to come on the show anytime. Thank you. Thank you. It's been fun. And that wraps up another episode of The Caps and Life. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. You can follow us on social media at Caps and Life. For more information about us and all of our previous episodes, visit thecapsandlife.com. 